In this video, I will give you a short overview of what statistical inference is, what we want to achieve with it, and what sort of things we need to know before we can do statistical inference. So let's think about the following situation. You have a population of things you're interested in. Let's say the UK population. And you may be interested in what the average salary is or what the sort of education is in the population or perhaps how education and salary are correlated with each other in the population. So that is what we want to know. Let's look at a little scheme to sort of illustrate how that will work. So here we have this, we have this population we are interested in. Okay, so this is what we want to know something. Uh, we want to know something about. What we now need to figure out is because we don't know these characteristics about the population unless you do a census. Okay, you will never sort of know that. We need to figure out how we can learn about that. So, firstly, before we continue, to just to make that clear, in that population there are lots of what we call units of in of uh, observation. So let's say there's a guy called John. In fact, there will be many Johns, uh, a Maria, a um, uh, Mark. Okay, and perhaps there's also a Tim here. And there are lots of these. So each of these dots, you know, lots of dots, which represents units of observation. So let's think about one one of these let's think about john now there may be all sorts of information we we could observe from john that maybe we said we're interested in the salary perhaps we're also interested in uh, education what sort of education john had how old john is and so forth and the, the gender perhaps so there could be all sorts of information that's attached to each of these units of information. We don't have all of that information, yet we want to learn about the characteristics of these pieces of information in the population. So what we then do is we do some, we take a sample. Okay, so we do some random sampling. So we randomly select some of, uh, some of these units of observations, for instance, two. Okay, and they all, so then they go into our sample. So Tim is in our sample, and there are lots of others, but not the whole population. And what, so what we have in our sample is we have these units of observations, and for each of these, we, we know whatever we have asked, salary, education, age, gender, for instance. Now, with the things, with these unit of observations we have in the sample, we basically can find out everything there is to know about that sample. We can calculate average salaries, the sort of distribution of education, the average age, what genders they are, the variance in the education. We can also, because we have several variables here, perhaps we can also figure out the correlation between some of these variables, for instance, the correlation between age and salary and so forth. All of that is what we call descriptive statistics. Okay, so we have a sample of data and we're using all of our descriptive tools, and that could be graphical or numerical, to describe what we have in the sample. But remember, that is only a sample. What we really want is we want to know about the population. So the question is now, how can we use the information in the sample to infer or to do inferential statistics, anything about the population. So can we find out about perhaps the distribution of certain variables or parameters of these distributions? So can we find out what the average salary is in the population, although we only have the sample? So it turns out, yes, we won't be able to exactly say what the average salary is, in the population, but we will be able to make probabilistic statements about the population average salary. I won't give you any details now, but it may be something, you know, well, we think there's certain range and we're 
a certain probability that uh, we think the value will be in there. So what do we need to make such inference from the sample to the population? Well, we need some assumptions. And a very important one, for instance, is that assumption of random sampling. OK. We need to assume that our sample is a good representation of the population. So hopefully we haven't only sampled people whose first name starts with T, like Tim. Because there could be certain cultural factors. It may be that people from certain cultures are much more likely to be called with a name that starts with Tim than from other cultures. And as soon as that would be the case, our sample wouldn't be representative anymore. We also need to know probability calculus. And why do we need to know about this? Well, mainly because deriving, we will be deriving from probability calculus some basic laws of statistics, like the central limit theorem or law of large numbers. And it's these sorts of laws which we need to make this inference from the sample to the population. Of course, here I will not be providing any details of that, that's for later. But this is just to anticipate that for basically for us to be able to go to inferential statistics, we first need to know descriptive statistics because we need to be able to describe the sample which we have. And then we need to know probability calculations, probability calculus to be able to then use that information and infer something about the population. And one reason we need probability calculus here is because we will not be able to make certain statements, certain in, in the sense of I'm 100% certain that the average salary in the population is X. We won't be able to do that. We will be able to make probabilistic statements. So, but that is enough for here for that overview that hopefully motivates first why we want to do inferential statistics because it's very common that you only have a sample of information but you want to know about a bigger population and hopefully also explains to you what the t the two key ingredients are key tools are which we need to get to inferential statistics that's descriptive statistics and probability calculus